Today we're going to discuss a technology that is quickly taking over the gaming keyboard market. Adjustable mechanical gaming switches. Is this tech legit or just some other gimmick to divorce you from your hard-earned cash? Hey there gamers, Minus10 here. I'm a middle-aged gamer that enjoys all gear related to gaming, streaming, and content creation. So to assess whether or not this tech will become a mainstay with all keyboard manufacturers, we're going to discuss the Drunk Deer A75 and the SteelSeries Apex Pro TKL Wireless. I mean, to cut to the chase, I'm, I'm your average gamer, and even I could tell the difference that this tech brings to gaming keyboards. Adjustable mechanical switches are very impressive, and I don't think I'll be able to go back to a single point actuation switch after trying out this tech. I mean, it's, it's really that impressive. So we'll start with the SteelSeries Apex Pro TKL wireless keyboard. It's a TKL keyboard. Uh, the technology it comes with is called OmniPoint 2.0 Adjustable Hypermagnetic Switches. Uh, these are analog switches, and the actuation points can be adjusted from 0.1 millimeters to 4 millimeters. And based on SteelSeries specs, it has a 0.7 millisecond response time. The switches are PBT double shot keycaps, thank you. And it also is a wireless keyboard that comes with uh, 2.4 gigahertz uh, wireless technology and Bluetooth 5.0. It does have an OLED display, which I'll talk about more in the impressions video. It also comes with the USB type C, thank you. And the feet are adjustable and there are two heights uh, for this keyboard. For the second keyboard, we're gonna discuss the Drunk Deer A75. This is a 75% keyboard layout. Uh, it's switch technology, uh, Drunk Deer just calls it magnetic adjustable switches. Uh, and these are pre-lubed, thank you. Uh, the adjustment points are between 0.4 millimeters to 3.6 millimeters, which is a slightly lower range than the Steel Series, but in reality, it doesn't make that big of a difference. Now, Drunk Deer doesn't give a time for its response times, it just calls it leg free input. Now, the keycaps are ABS keycaps, and after using it for about a week, there's definitely a grease factor. Uh, it is not wireless, it's a USB Type C keyboard. Uh, and it also comes with a, a braided cable. Uh, the keyboard also has RGB, but I don't have it plugged in, so uh, it's not visible on this video. Uh, one nice thing is the keyboard does come with Mac keycaps as well as Windows, which is a nice touch. So what is the use case for this technology? Well, I mean, this technology, first and foremost, is very legit, and gamers who have been playing on single point mechanical switches will absolutely notice the faster in-game response times right out of the box. Now, that said, this technology is really only applicable to PvP gamers. For single player or PvE games, adjustable mechanical switches really don't make any sense because you don't need those really fast response times because you're not competing against anybody. Now, there is a learning curve with this technology. These switches are light and actuate with very low force. Now, I, I don't really have a way, a technical way, to actually measure the force needed to, uh, to activate the key switch. Uh, and so the only way I can do is I can describe the feeling, and it's basically like playing with extremely light speed silver switches. Now for me, I, I'm used to a heavier switch like the Gatoron Ink Black V2s that have a much higher force requirement, at around 60 uh, plus grams of force. So when I first started using the tech, I was uh, spamming my, uh, my tactical equipment key as I tend to rest my fingers on certain keycaps. Now, I quickly adjusted, and I think most gamers will also quickly adjust how you rest your fingertips uh, on these keyboards. Now, the Steel Series allows you to set an actuation point as low as 0.1 millimeters where the Drunk Deer allows for as little as 0.4 millimeters. But honestly, this is way too light. For me, I settled on one millimeter of travel to actuate the switch, and this was noticeable in games as my regular mechanical switches have actuation points around two millimeters with a heavier force. So the other selling point for these keyboards is rapid fire. Now, if you're playing a game that requires you to spam a key for action, this tech will be a massive game changer. I mostly play Warzone, 
And when I entered situations that required a melee move, uh, for me, I use the E, I won every battle. It, it wasn't even close. Gamers can assign also multiple actions to a single switch based upon the key switch travel, but I've yet to really give this a try because my muscle memory is just associated with a single action to a single key. So to implement this technology, it's very straightforward. Both keyboards come with software that allows gamers to adjust each switch's actuation point. It's, it's, it's very simple to make the adjustments in each keyboard software, but don't forget to save your changes because uh, I did make several changes and I forgot to hit the save button. Uh, both GG and Drunk Deer software requires a save. Now, as with all peripheral gaming software, I mean, it's a mixed bag when it comes to user experience. And SteelSeries GG is definitely better than Drunk Deer's generic keyboard OEM driver. I mean, seriously, that, <laughs> that's what Drunk Deer software is called, keyboard OEM driver. So now we come to the really interesting topic of pricing and, and buckle in gamers. If you wanna take a leap on this tech, you're gonna to have to cough up some serious cash. I mean, there isn't a wallet option that is below $100 and the SteelSeries Apex Pro TKL Wireless sent me back 275 bucks. And the Drunk Deer weighed in at $156 with taxes. Now, I've yet to receive my Wooting 60HE as it's on back order, but the Wooting keyboard cost me $183 with taxes. Yeah, if you want to go this route of adjustable mechanical switches, this one is going to hurt extremely hard. So what is best? Well, so far, I have yet to form an opinion on if SteelSeries or Drunk Deer's tech is better. W what I can tell my viewers is that this technology, it's a game changer for gaming keyboards. And I can guarantee you, every gaming keyboard manufacturer will be introducing adjustable switches into their product lines very soon. I don't have any info from Logitech or other manufacturers, but, but there's way too much margin to be made to not include this technology. And as we can see from SteelSeries, the mainstream manufacturers are going to basically gouge us gamers. There is absolutely no way I can recommend a nearly $300 keyboard to anyone as this is what I call ludicrous pricing. So if you want to give it a try, at this point, I would go with the Drunk Deer A75. It's almost half the price of the SteelSeries keyboard and the typing experience is superior to the SteelSeries. That said, the SteelSeries typing experience, it's not terrible. I'll be posting impression videos of each keyboard in the coming weeks to cover the features, but I know at this point, I probably won't be going back to a single point actuation mechanical switch. I am 100% sold on adjustable switch technology. If you found this video on adjustable switch technology informative, I'd appreciate any likes for the video as this helps out my tiny YouTube channel. If you have any comments or feedback, please leave them in the comments section below. Thanks for watching.